I'm going to be sharing with you some herbs that you can incorporate into your hair care regimen. In particular, I want to talk about a uh, tea rinse, the herbal tea rinse, and I'm going to share some herbs with you to do that. So why should you use herbs on your hair? Herbs are natural. It's from nature. Nature is abundant. Nature is also healing. And herbs are natural medicines. They contain so many different nutrients and minerals, um, antibacterial properties that can help to boost your immune system, encourage the body to detox, whether you're applying it to your skin as our skin absorbs everything that we put on it. Even those harmful things that you're putting on, it's absorbing it, okay? And herbs is uh, has the ability to tighten and tone your organs so they can work properly. They have the ability to fight cancers and other diseases in the body. They have the ability to prevent diseases from forming in your body. They have the ability to help you if you're having any type of menstrual issues, cramping, or yoni steaming. You can steam your yoni, ladies, and that helps with endometriosis, fibroids, cramps. If you have really bad cramps, if you uh, if your cycle lasts for seven days plus, yoni steam, yoni steam, okay? So herbs also um, are great to use for skin care. It can help to fight acne. Herbs are great to combat, combat asthma. You guys, I can go on and on about the benefits of herbs. And as I talk with people about my herbal oils, they're really confused as to, you know, okay, you got a little leaf in there or whatever, but what does that do for me? We have no idea the benefits of herbs because we're so consumed in prescription medications. We're so consumed in getting a ache, going to the doctor, they give us a prescription. We don't even read the packet that comes with the medication. And if you do, do you completely understand exactly what's in that medication? And have you read the side effects of the medication? Think about the commercials. When I listen to medication commercials, at first they do a pretty commercial, they have a healthy lady floating around, or a man, or a couple, or whatever, or kids. It's, it's all great and everything. And then at the end, they give you a long list of all the things that could go wrong. Okay, so with herbs, you don't have to worry about that. And when it comes to things going wrong, it can be because a particular herb doesn't work well with your medication that you may be taking. So that is when you have to consult your physician and say, I'm interested in taking this herb to promote my health. What do you think? How can I incorporate this into my regimen? If you're going to a physician who knows nothing about herbs and natural healing or anything like that, they don't study that, that's not their thing, they're not going to know what to tell you. So I would suggest to seek out someone who does incorporate holistic ways to better your health. There are doctors out there that do that. So um, for the most part, just easy, breezy, and simple. I'm going to share with you some herbs that you can make a tea with and do a hair rinse. This is going to support your scalp health. It's also going to nourish your, uh, your strands, the strands of your hair help you to have some shine, help you to combat anything as far as dandruff. If you have uh, eczema on your scalp, in which I had a customer and she was actually a little girl and over half her head had eczema on it. So um, something like that, it can help to soothe that and just promote a healthy hair growth journey. Now also too, um, working with these teas and everything, I've also used teas for soothing wounds. Um, I've also used it like with eczema that I have. If I'm stressed or my diet is out of whack or whatever, then I end up having eczema flares on my hands. So sometimes you may notice my hands are a little darker today or whatever. I have to adjust my gut with probiotics and um, I do that. So whew, the eczema thing is something else. But now that I know it's my diet, then I jump on it immediately and I know what to do. A lot of people don't know that eczema is associated to your diet. Also too, with um, having eczema, I was prescribed a hydrocodone at a very young age. And so now that I'm an adult, I took it upon myself to study that and what it can do to us. The thinning out of the hands, the causing stretch marks in the area, the chemicals that's getting absorbed into your skin, 
you know, and all the other complications that can come from that. And I've been using hydrocortisone since I was a kid. So imagine, yes, I'm trying to put on something to soothe my eczema, but at the same time, is it really helping me? So I'm gonna share some herbs with you. Um, and you just make a regular tea with this. If you want to, um, you could do maybe a half a pitcher of tea of herbs. Take like maybe a teaspoon of the herb that you want. Well, let's say, let's say maybe, I'm gonna say two to three tablespoons. It really depends on your herb. And I'm gonna get into that in detail in a moment because some herbs I will use less of than I would others because of the potency. Like you have your leaves and you have your roots. Your roots would of course be more potent than a lot of your leaves. And um, also too, some of the herbs, you may have to do a tea with a uh, cold tea brew type thing or, um, or hot, especially if you wanna give it a taste. So anyway, yeah, do a hair rinse and give it your tea a taste. Bless your, bless your body with it. All right, so the first one that I'm going to share with you all is is the um the organic witch hazel leaf i don't know if you're familiar with witch hazel but um witch hazel is mothers you may be familiar with witch hazel wipes as well as if you deal with hemorrhoids you may be familiar with that it's very soothing um it also heals and this witch hazel leaf there's also a bark that i have as well now with the leaf you can make a simple tea with this and this is actually one of the ingredients that i place in a herbal infusion with someone who has um like some scratches on their scalp and stuff it's bleeding it's irritated i use something healing like a witch hazel leaf and i'm very picky about herbs um as a seed like on this one and this is just to show you guys like i'll be on it with my herbs i wrote on the back right there scalp and skin when i got this herb which um i received from school um i went through all my herbs in my box as a matter of fact i have two boxes with over 50 herb selections basically what i do i um, create different things from these herbs i study these herbs i taste them i incorporate them into my food i incorporate them into my products um you know and i order more whenever i need more but um for the most part this is the witch hazel leaf and then you have the bark and on the back of this bark container. And y'all, excuse my nails. I know I need to take my polish off, so please don't jump in my comments talking about take the polish off your nails. I'm gonna do that when I get done. Okay, fix. So anyway, um, back to regular process. This one is the um, organic witch hazel bark. Okay, so anytime you're dealing with a bark or a root decoctions, meaning more so simmering it, will help to break open this um this herb the cell walls of the herb so that you can get that goodness out of there that's another thing when it comes to my infusions i have to prepare the herbs in different ways and then put them together to create what i want and i have to know what herbs work together with what for the best for the best benefit so here um is the bark All right, so witch hazel is one that you can try out. Do a tea if your scalp is irritated, inflamed, um, you possibly have bleeding going on because you've been scratching too much, then witch hazel would be great for you to do a tea. Just create a tea out of your herbs and um, pour it over the hair, as simple as that. You don't even have to rinse it out. Just pour it over the hair. Another great herb would be the rosemary. Okay, and as you can see, this one is almost empty. 
I use rosemary a lot. As a matter of fact, I have some here that I actually purchased from the grocery store and I just dried it out. And put it in my little bag here. <laughs> Rosemary is a powerhouse herb. Okay, rosemary is um, great for stimulating the scalp. Even smelling a rosemary oil gets your senses going. The body reacts to rosemary really, really quick. So this is the, um, let me see if this is a, yeah, this is just, you all know what rosemary is. Pretty much in this bag. I don't want to spill it trying to lean it over, but it's pretty much what I have in this bag without the stem part. So rosemary is another one that you can make a tea out of and pour it onto your hair. You can also combine these herbs, you guys, and make a tea to pour over your hair. Okay, so my next one is lavender. I have this one in a little bag. Now, one thing I noticed about people in lavender, whenever I say, oh, this, this contains lavender, they smell it because they want to smell lavender. A lot of the times, your lavender dried herb will not have a scent. It is your lavender essential oils that can help you to have a scent to the product. So although I infuse lavender into my oils, they do not smell like lavender. You can see the lavender in there floating around beautifully but and I do I send you the um, container with well, the mason jar with the herbs in so you can see it you can see what the herb looks like and you pretty much strain it and use it or however however you want to apply it but this herb lavender does not smell like lavender not, it smells like lavender, but not to the point to where it makes your product smell like lavender. So it has a good scent to it, just not strong enough to show in an infusion or if you're incorporating it. If you infuse and incorporate that into another product, you will not be able to smell this dried herb unless you add an essential oil. Lavender is also great for um, supporting a healthy pH balance on the scalp, combating any type of scalp issues that you may have. It's also great for just putting over the entire head. I also um, use it for relaxation. I also soak my feet in herbal infusions. As you know that our feet have the ability to absorb as well things into our system. It's amazing. Another one that I love to use for tea rinses and I also infuse into my herbal oils. I make many different herbal oils. I personalize and I have the base oil. But this one is the chamomile, or camel mile, however you want to pronounce it. I keep this in a little bag too. I have I have a lot of herbs. I have some in Ziploc bags like this that I just keep for personal use. Oh, but for the most part, um, this is the camel mile or chamomile. Kind of hard to see, especially with all of the pieces in there. But chamomile is, is a great herb uh, to make a tea out of, to use on your hair, on your skin. I have used it on in my inflammation on my hands with eczema. Um, it's very soothing. Also, if you're feeling under the weather, drinking some chamomile tea can also help you to relax at night if you drink some of that. So create you some tea and pour half of it over your head and uh, drink the rest. Well, not in all, in all in one sitting, of course, but take advantage of that. Okay, so the next one that I have is calendula petals. This is what this looks like. Calendula is another good one that supports your scalp health. This is also another herb that I use in some of my infusions depending on the, um, the person, what they need, what they don't need. So Calendula is another one. So let's see, I think that is, yeah, that's it that I want to show you all on this video when it comes to 
um, the tea rinses and the herbs to use. I don't want to overwhelm you as there's so many that you can incorporate. But for starters, I am trying to help people to transition to a more natural way of living so that we can support our health, get off of all of these medications because we won't need them anymore. And our children also too, they're just on this sugar rush or some sort. Ooh, I had to transition my kids off of that sugar stuff because I was buying all kinds of sweets and things and now their behavior as far as hyper um, activity, they're more chill. They play, they're kids, they stump around, they flip, they do all those things, but it's, it's not like they're just running crazy. So I've noticed a big change in cutting out a lot of things in our home to more natural things in our behaviors. So those are just a few that I want to share with you all today. Um, and you know, let me share with you again how to make your tea. You would just prepare um, your herbs just like you would a regular black tea that you purchase out the store. Just like you make that pitcher, that pitcher, pitcher of tea. Make your tea just like that, except but with the herb, and then pour it onto the hair. Okay, if your hair is full of uh, products and gunk and things like that, it would not do anything for you. So what you're going to need to do is make sure you pour it over cleansed hair. If you have um, hair that's has a lot of product in it. So that is basically it. Very simple, easy, breezy. You can purchase herbs um, online. You can also, I prefer to go into the herbal store. I do have um, an online company that I like to order from, Star West Botanicals. I could put their link into the description for you. Um, but for the most part, I like to go into the stores, whether it's a farmer's market, whole food store, or whatever. I like to go in and look and smell and do all those great things over my herbs before I decide to purchase that herb. It's very important because uh, some herbs are just, they're not created equal. They're just not. But that's it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. Thank you to all of my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Please do and share, my, and share this video so that I can continue to help other people to transition their home from chemical field, toxin field to more natural products, therefore supporting a healthy hair growth journey. Thank you so much, you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.